Let's pull out our brush pens and paint a beautiful fall leaf in our sketchbooks together. Hello and welcome friends. I'm Smita Kati from the blog Smiling Colors. I love markers, journals, and sketchbooks. And in today's video, I'll be painting a fall or autumn leaf in my sketchbook. I'll take you along with me. All you need to do is pull out your brush pens or any other watercolors and let's get started. First, I'm gonna select the colors I want to use for today's painting. I'm using Tombow's dual brush pens today and I'm on the design team and receive all of the products from them. So these are the exact color numbers of the markers I'm using today. Feel free to take a screenshot, grab the colors you need, and get ready to paint with me. On my blog, smilingcolors.com, I'll leave the link to it in the description box below. I have a full blog post in which I have fall leaves that you can use as inspiration to paint. Today I'm going to be using this oak leaf as a reference and painting it in my sketchbook. You want to use a nice large paintbrush for this. I'm using a number 8 round squirrel paintbrush. I'll link it in the description box below. You want to use mixed media or watercolor paper while watercoloring with the dual brush pens. And today I'm using a watercolor sketchbook that has like 140 pound paper in it. So with the brush tip of either one of the yellows, you want to first draw the outline of the leaf. I'm not using a pencil today, I'm just using the pen and drawing it because I want the leaf to be kind of organic, wiggly lines. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be to size. It's just an oak leaf in your sketchbook. Once we have an outline established, we want to start adding color inside it. So look at the reference photograph and just in all of the areas that you see green, start adding some green color using the brush tip. Okay, in our reference image, we see that the tips are all kind of darker and brownish. So with the brownish green color, I'm going over the yellow tips and this is the time you wanna to take to kind of define them add a little more drama to it, just have fun and exaggerate those tips. You're not really pressing down the brush tip on the paper and that's the reason why the watercolor paper doesn't really fray the brush tips. If you're hand lettering on watercolor paper and if you hand letter very often, then the brush tips might actually undergo some kind of pressure and wear and tear. But when you're just using your brush pens to add some color on the paper and then painting over it with water, you're not really damaging the tips. With the same color and the brush tip, I'm just going to add some kind of dots all around the leaf. You can see that speckled detailing in the reference image that we're using. You don't want to add too much, just a few here and there. Finally, with the yellowish orange color, you want to fill in most of the white spaces. You can have a little bit showing through, but you want to add more of the yellow color to the paper. The last detail that I want to add are a few more dots in this orangish shade that I pulled out. Very little, but the orange is such a contrast color, it'll kind of pop when we paint it. So 
You want to dip your paintbrush in water but not have really too much water on the paintbrush. It has to be just moist and then carefully start painting over the yellow area. You want to definitely start painting with the yellow or the lightest color on your paper. If you start at the brown tips, then everything else will have a brown muddy shade to it. So I like to start with the yellow and I'm not really blending or adding any strokes if you see. I'm just gently adding water on top of the yellow areas and if I'm going closer to like a brown or a green area, I gently tap my paintbrush to lightly blend the colors and then I move to the next spot. I'm not spending any amount of time on a single area. It's really important to control the amount of water on top of your paintbrush. You want your paintbrush to be very slightly damp. You don't want any water drops on it. You don't want it to be heavy with water. And the dampness of the bristles is just enough to activate the watercolor effect of the jewel brush pens. Just that little bit of water is enough to blend the colors. You see how they're bleeding into each other, yet they have like this defined area. So that soft bleed is all we need to make the leaf look realistic.
To finish off the leaf with the sharp tip of your paintbrush, you want to extend those tips that we've drawn on the leaf. You want to define them to kind of taper to a sharp point. I'm also gently just pulling the darker brown color down so that it sits on top of the lighter color and forms a nice in-between shade. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial friends and had fun painting it along with me. If you want more inspiration to paint fall leaves, I have a Skillshare class that covers that exact topic and I'll leave a link down below in the description box where you can access it. If you use my referral link, I think you'll get two weeks free and I'm sure you're going to enjoy more classes on Skillshare. If you recreate this on social media, make sure to tag me at Smita Kati and stop by my blog SmilingColors.com for more videos and tutorials. I'll see you again soon with another video. Till then, happy crafting!